welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm, and today I'm answering one of the most common questions that I get asked from people who are leaving a narcissist or getting out of a narcissistic relationship, which is, am I the narcissist? And in this video, I want to help you understand why you're even thinking that, and number two, how you can tell if you're a narcissist. So first of all, just in general, by the nature of the question, narcissists tend to not be self-reflective in in their behavior. They will look back at their behavior and question it at, if it did not have the outcome that they were looking for. This is why in so many of my other videos, I talk about how important it is to understand that narcissists are learning. Narcissists are learning your reaction and your responses to the things and the tactics that they are using so that they understand what personalities respond better to certain tactics over other ones. So they are increasing the likelihood that their craft is effective on the victim that they are targeting. But they aren't uh, asking themselves questions in a self-reflective manner about, is this behavior healthy? Is this actually you know, who I am? Do I want to change this behavior? How is the, the behavior that I'm exhibiting impacting the people around me? And do I want to continue to hurt them or cause them grief or cause them stress. They don't ask themselves those types of questions. So just from the nature of asking yourself if you're a narcissist, you probably aren't. Here's the one caveat to that, is that narcissists, again, they learn. They are learning all of the time. They are receiving feedback. They are looking at how that feedback is implemented and affecting the next Thing that they do, right? So they do something, it doesn't have the result that they want, they try again with some tweaks, they see again how that thing is impacting their behavior and they are learning. Narcissists are also learning even when it comes to professionals. This is why I say the one caveat to that is if this question is brought up in therapy, if this question is brought up in some sort of counseling, some sort of uh, mandated uh, a session with like a PC, a, a parenting coordinator, something that you're meeting, a person you're meeting through that is has been mandated by the court that you meet with. A narcissist absolutely will bring up the question, am I a narcissist? In this situation, because they are trying to show how self-aware they are in front of the counselor or whoever that third party is. They want to show that, hey, I'm willing to change if it's me. I'm willing to do all of the things if it's me. And this act can actually last quite some time. And again, they can have quite a bit of success with this charade if the person that they're sitting in front of, even a trained professional, is not aware of what NPD looks like and sounds like when they are in a therapy session. Uh, if you aren't familiar with how the narcissists use triangulation and how they can start triangulating and why triangulation is so effective, please check out my previous video that I released last week. I've linked it in the description of this one so that it's easy for you to find the shock tactics of a narcissist and why they use these tactics because that will really help you understand what the narcissist is doing here. So if the narcissist is asking, am I a narcissist in front of a counselor, in front of a third party where they're mandated to be, this is not a closed session, a private session that they themselves went out to go find, they are doing that in order to manipulate and ultimately triangulate that third party, that professional in that situation. One of the reasons that you're asking yourself, am I a narcissist, is because you're taking a look back on your behavior, especially when it comes to your behavior with this person, and you're seeing things that you don't like. There's, You're seeing things that you don't agree with. You're seeing things that don't make you happy, uh, about yourself, don't make you feel good, that don't really line up with some of your belief systems and the things that you are are sure about yourself, your personality traits, and, and so forth. And so you're asking yourself, am I the narcissist? Because I actually did call names. I actually, you know, did try to sabotage, you know, their whatever, or I tried to ruin this thing for them, or I tried to you know, get involved in a way that maybe I shouldn't have or in a manner that I shouldn't have. The tactics that I was using, the method that I was using wasn't appropriate for that. I've talked about this before in a few other videos, but really what has happened here is that you have learned, you've been around a person who uses these tactics, who uses these methods and gets what they want. And it seems that they get away with it. So not only are they getting the outcome that they want, they're never held accountable for the things that they're doing 
on the way to achieve that goal. So the gaslighting, the manipulation, the stonewalling, all of these um, tactics that they have been using on the way to achieve their goal, they've not been held, held accountable and they've ended up reaching their goal. You will start to look at this and start to see, I wanna give them either a taste of their own medicine or I wanna have the same outcome that they have been having. And again, this can be non-conscious, so it doesn't mean that you actually consciously thought those statements to yourself, but your non-conscious mind is extremely powerful. It's responsible for 90, at least 90% of the decisions that you make throughout the day. And so it is looking at the behavior that this person is exhibiting and seeing how you're be behaving according to your own standards, this set of rules, and it's getting you nothing. This person has no rules and it's getting them everything. This is the kind of uh, analysis that your non-conscious mind is doing. And so your non-conscious mind says, I wonder if I do the, those things, I would get my my same thing. Let's start calling that the narcissist names. Next time we're fighting, I'm gonna call them a name. Next time we're having an issue, I'm gonna start stonewalling them. Next time we're, we're having some sort of thing, I'm gonna just throw my, uh, my standards out the window and I'm gonna start doing what they do because they need a taste of their own medicine and I'm tired of playing by the rules and I ultimately just need to get what I want. That's the internal process, non-conscious a lot of times, that's happening. So what happens the next time is that there's a fight, there's an argument, there's a disagreement of some sort, and you start using the same tactics. You start gaslighting the narcissist or name-calling the narcissist. Except the thing is, this is your first rodeo, so to speak, at doing this. Even if, it, if, you, even if you tried it once or twice or three times or four times, or whatever, you've tried it a handful of times, you have not perfected your craft over the course of a lifetime like the narcissist has. Again, the narcissist is extremely good at reading people. A lot of people think that narcissists are really emotionally inept, that they can't read social clues. That's not true at all. Narcissists are extremely good at reading people. They're one of the best uh, social barometers you will ever find. They can read people very well, even better than empaths, even better than a lot of empaths. They can tell other narcissists. They can tell other predators in a crowd. A lot of empaths cannot do that because to them, thinking that somebody could think so opposite of them is just such a stretch that they just don't even want to believe that there's such a thing as narcissists or sociopaths or psychopaths out there, right? And so what, what ends up happening is that a narcissist is much better at this game than you are. And so the narcissist will use whatever you just did. You called them a name. You tried to sabotage something. You said something that you're not proud of. Whatever it is that you just did and use it against you. And it will be much more effective than the times before. In other words, because you decided to get into their arena, your arena was over here following the rules, doing all of the things, you know, not engaging in nonsensical arguments and so forth. You decide, I can't do that anymore. I'm not getting the results. I, they're never held accountable. I'm going to go over here into this pool where there's no rules. I can do whatever I want and I'll get that same result. What happens is you just join the narcissist arena. And not only are they very good at this game, they make the rules to this game and they make them up as they go along. And they're getting better at the game. This is your first time trying to play this game. You're not gonna be an expert at this game no matter how long you've been with a narcissist. It's just not in your nature. And so you're trying to do something that is fundamentally against who you are. You're, there's no way you're gonna be better than the narcissist or even close to being on the same playing field as the narcissist. Not only that, not only will you feel bad about your decisions and behaviors in that moment, you're going to realize that the narcissist has just manipulated and twisted all of those things that you just said or did to the narcissist against you. And now you're really questioning your own sanity. Maybe I really am the narcissist. Maybe there really is something wrong with me. Maybe I'm really not a good parent. Maybe I really should go get help. Maybe I really should do X, Y, and Z, whatever the narcissist just planted in your head in this moment. This is why being self-aware and being aware of your own baseline, tracking how you are feeling every day, the thoughts that you are having every day. I'm going to give you a little technique at the end of this video that you can start implementing today to kind of help you get back on track and really uh, uh, reclaim the ground of who you are truly, right? Your authenticity. But before I give you that, I just want you to be aware that 
if you are not sure of who you are or where your baseline is, you're not going to really be able to say like, this, this is the game that I play. This, this arena over here is where I'm comfortable. You're, you're going to be keep trying to jump back and forth. Okay, I'm going to do that because that didn't feel good. I'm going to go back over here. I'm just going to go back to ignoring them. I'm going to go back to doing all of these things, right? But then your, your cup gets filled up with all of this nonsense still. You start getting angry that there's no justice being served in your case and all of this stuff. And you try to go back into the arena, try to get back at the narcissist by playing their own games. Again, they are much better than that. So they will look, they will use all of the things that you are doing to make it seem like that's who you always are, even though that's who they always are. But because you tried to dabble in their playing field once or twice, they can manipulate the situation because they are much better at it than you. And remember, they are playing chess while you're playing checkers. You are so focused on the narcissist. You are just focusing on what the narcissist is doing all of the time. And the narcissist is focusing on what you're doing. They're triangulating your, your religious leader. They're triangulating their attorney and all of the third parties involved in your legal case. They're triangulating your family and your support system. They're making sure that you're having problems at work. You see how the narcissist has a lot of other moving parts going on in their game because they are much more uh, adept at playing this narcissistic game than you are. You're not even qualified to step onto this arena. And yet it looks like if I want to win, I must go over here. I must engage in these tactics. I must start doing these things. And that's the biggest thing. It's the biggest pitfall that people fall into. This is why really understanding not only the causes of narcissism, but the causes of narcissism in your life. Why were you drawn to that specifically is so important because if you do not break this trauma bond, you will continue to attract into your life bosses, friendships, uh, other other people come into your, another romantic relationship, whatever. All kinds of people coming into your life will be narcissists because that that bond to you is so strong. This is an energetic, this is an energetic cord that is working to pull more people like this into your life. And it seems like you can never get free. And it's true because you've gotten caught into this web of of the the energy vampires that narcissists are. Instead of being strong enough to create and generate your own uh, ecosystem, if you will, of of who you are, your own energy, and keeping your own field clean. You, you will never learn how to do that if you continuously keep jumping back and forth because it's you're never set on who you are. Okay, so all of that being said, one of the easiest things that you can do, and you can start doing it right now, is to set a timer on your phone. From the time that you wake up, okay, so first, first alarm maybe goes off 10 minutes after you wake up, and you just it's just a little reminder to write down whatever it is that you're thinking about and however it is that you're feeling in your body. Maybe you just woke up 10 minutes ago. Maybe you're still feeling a little tired. Maybe you're feeling groggy. Maybe you woke up feeling amazing. You just want to write down how you're feeling in your body and the thoughts that you're having. And you want to do this every one to two hours until the time that is that you go to sleep. You want to do this for either 48 or 72 hours. 72 hours is better. By taking a look at, the, at that data, you have to be honest with yourself when you're doing this. At the end of the 72 hours or 48 hours, I want you to take a look at that data and see what you are thinking about most of the time because that's going to tell you where the majority of your energy is going. When you can understand where you are putting your attention and your focus, you understand where your energetic field is feeding. You can start understanding why your soul tie continues to get stronger with the narcissist even though you file divorce papers, you've moved out of the house, or whatever has happened, you've been taking steps that look like in the outer world, in the natural world, this should be getting lesser, you're going to actually see why that's being strengthened. You're going to actually see why is that bond growing because of where you're feeding it. And if you want another little tip that you can do after that is that you can start trying to find out ways in, start putting in things that you would rather be growing. So if you would not want to be thinking about the narcissist, what is something that would be helping you grow in that area that you are thinking about the narcissist in? So for example, if you are obsessing about what the narcissist is doing when they have your children, for example, instead of thinking about all of the things that the narcissist could be doing when they have your children, what kind of lies they're telling your children and so forth, why don't you take that same amount of time, same amount of energy and pour it into yourself and thinking about you as a parent. What ways can you better connect with your children on? How can you better explain to them the, the very complicated dynamics that, that they are experiencing between their parents during this time? What are some things that you could do to 
increase your children's awareness of predators, of abusers in their field, and equip them to handle these things on their own? What are some ways that you could also increase the core memories that your children have with you the next time that they come to you? So you can start putting that energy into the thing that you would rather have uh, and take it away from the thing that you're currently growing. I cover this and a million other things inside of my Narcissistic Detox Intensive. It's a year-long program designed to ensure that you have broken the trauma bond with the narcissist and not just move you from a negative to a zero, but move you from a negative to a positive so that you know exactly who you are and you never start to play in the narcissist arena ever again. You don't have to gaslight yourself into thinking that you're the narcissist ever again. That thought would just never come into your mind because you are so sure of who you are, you know what you stand for, and you are honoring towards your belief systems. If you want to join, if you are truly ready to break this bond once and for all and never look back, then I want you to text the word detox to 512-677-9322 and see if you qualify to join. And if you're outside of the US, I want you to shoot me an email with the same word detox in the body of the email. My email address is in the description of this video below. I hope this video has helped you. I hope it has blessed you. I hope it has made you wake, and wake up to whether you are truly a narcissist or not and why you have the feeling of being a narcissist after you've come out of a narcissistic relationship. And I will see you in the next video.